Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Ann Manera for another live color along here on Monday, October 5th. I just need to do a quick sound check. Good morning, Bonnie Hughes. And who else is here this morning? Sarah, good morning, good morning. Uh, so let's make sure that we can hear me. Can, can everybody hear me okay? Sarah, can you hear me? How about you, Bonnie? Hey, Sarah. So while I'm here on, on um, while I'm here live on YouTube, I'm not on Facebook. So um, I'm going to actually close that out so we have a better connection. Good. Everyone can hear me. Okay. So I've got a different setup with my microphone. So I just wanted to uh, give that a quick, um, a quickie. So we have a few minutes before, <clears throat> good morning, Laura. Um, we have a few minutes before we will get started with the um, call along. So I thought I would, um, hey, good morning, Sharon and Cheryl. Um, I thought I would take a moment to uh, talk about a couple of different things. And then I'll, like, I'll also make sure that I, I talk about it um, as we uh, get closer to the end of the, of the call along and also um, during. So let me just grab a piece of paper. Make a couple of crazy notes. Okay, so we're using chalk pastels today, by the way, but I'm going to uh, just kind of make sure that I kind of have a little bit more organization about what we're talking about today because, I don't know, my head's in the fog. How about you? How is everyone today? Kind of gray and gloomy here today, I gotta say. All right, let's see. Get this all out of the way. All right, so a few things we want to talk about today. I'm going to write them down here because that'll just make it easier. Uh, we want to talk about, uh, coloring camp and I want to talk about the October coloring retreat and my new gnomes book, which is called holiday gnomes because people have been asking and I want to give the, the update on that. And what else did I want to talk about? There was something else. Is it beautiful and sunny? All right, I'm on my way, Bonnie, because it's crazy here. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So dark and gloomy and rainy and uh, it's not good. What else did I want to talk about? There was something else. I don't know. I think that was it. Coloring Camp, the October Coloring Retreat, the Gnomes Coloring Book. Um, today we're using chalk pastels. Um, all right, so let's talk about coloring camp. So coloring camp is uh, October 25th to October 31st. And um, I have my coloring camp book with me. And this is the camp book. So if you're interested in joining uh, coloring camp, then um, we are meeting on October 25th to the 31st. It's $21.99 to get the book. And the book can be purchased on Amazon, or you can get it on my website, annmanera.com. And uh, we meet for seven days. We have a live tutorial, seven days, Sunday through Saturday. We have daily giveaways, which this time we've got uh, smooth gel pens, spare fiber pencils, black widow pencils, uh, paparazzi jewelry. Um, we have a lot of stuff. We have giveaways. The total giveaways are over $200 this time, I believe. So we are... Um, We've got a lot happening for this one. We're going to go with color theory again, grayscale photo, make it pop is another one. We're going to draw the camp house again, and we are adding texture, shading, and we're going to paint a coloring page. So I'm excited about this camp. Um, there'll be a couple of changes to the color along schedule as we go into November. I haven't, um, I know there's a color along that's scheduled on November uh, 2nd, I believe. It's the Monday after camp, and I will be rescheduling that because I always need to give my voice a break. Um, see who else has joined us this morning. Uh, Jean, good morning, Jean. Good morning, Terry. Um, 
the other thing I want to talk about is the October coloring retreat. Uh, the October coloring retreat is uh, this Saturday and Sunday, October 10th and 11th. And it's at 10 a.m. It's $15.99 to join the retreat. We're going to be, uh, I don't have the paperwork with me, but we're going to be coloring with uh, water co watercolor pencils and oil pastels on the second day's oil pastels. There was um, a couple of things that have been happening with that. I originally scheduled that to meet on Zoom, and I have since changed it. So, Gene, um, I don't know if you got my message, but um, I have changed that, and we are meeting on Facebook. So um, Zoom was a little bit too confusing for some people, so I flipped it, and um, I'm willing to uh, to be flexible and to make some changes and go with the flow. So uh, just bear with me here. You know, all of this whole live streaming, especially during the pandemic, there's so many different things happening, so many different ways to do it, so much uh, happening out there. Hey, good morning, Mary. And um, you just kind of have to be flexible. I mean, I think I've learned... Um, I don't know. I feel like I could make a list of all the things that I've learned through uh, throughout this pandemic. And one of them is flexibility. Um, I feel like I am lacking patience. I don't know about everyone else, but that is what is going on. So the next thing I want to talk about before we get, start coloring this morning, and I'm going to go over these things one again um, throughout the color along today and towards the end, just so no one misses anything, is that... Um, uh, the gnomes coloring book, the holiday gnomes. I'm work, still working on it. Hopefully I'll finish it uh, over the next couple of days. But Amazon has got some sort of a glitch when it comes to publishing uh, books over the past couple of days. I released a new book last week, Mindful Mandalas, and it is still not live on um, Amazon. So I'm kind of waiting until, and I know Ruth Sanderson is having the same problem with her Christmas magic uh, coloring book and we're both a little frustrated so um fingers crossed and positive energy sent to um sent to send it to uh amazon for my book and mindful man dollars and for ruth, San ruth sanderson's book too because i don't know what the heck is going on but we need to uh um it it, it needs to become live it's crazy so let me see what else here um Let me just give it a quick, um, I need to link this video to uh, a couple of places. Uh, any other questions? Does anybody have any questions about the upcoming coloring uh, retreat and the uh, and coloring camp? That's my, my gonna, I'm going to throw that out there. Um, Yeah, flexibility. You're right, Sharon. Hey, good morning, Dawn. I'm glad to see you. I was thinking about you yesterday, actually. And um, I don't know, I was just thinking about you sending and hoping that you were okay. So um, what else is happening? Okay, we got that going on. All right. Uh, oh, did you guys get the calendar? That was the other thing. The free coloring calendar by 2021. I think a lot of people that I'm seeing here this morning have it already. Hey, you know what? My goal is to give out 1,000 calendars this year. I don't know if I can do it. Hey, good morning, Trish. Um, my goal is to give out 1,000. I've given out about, I think, just under 100 so far. Last year, when I gave away a free calendar, I think I gave out 125, and then people stopped. But um, my goal is 1,000. I'm going to flip through this while we're waiting. This is the new Holiday Gnomes book. It's got some crazy pages in it. This is what I have with my pencil lines, so this is definitely not the final copy. Um, these crazy little gnomes have taken a, taken a hold of my life. I'm ready to uh, create them in 3D. Oh, you're welcome, Sharon. Bonnie says, I will not be making coloring camp this year. First year, I will not be doing it. My daughter and granddaughter are coming from Kearney, Nebraska to visit for a few days that week. Well, I hope you have a great time with them, Bonnie Hughes. But yes, thank you for always attending it. Good morning, Lynn Miller. So this is the gnome, the Holiday Gnomes coloring book. And um, this one, I'm just still waiting. I've got to wait to submit it. I, I'm working on the cover. Uh, I've got some few things I need to clean up, for, clean up on the cover. And um, hopefully this will be out this week. I, I, I don't know. Amazon is just kind of in stuck in a glitch right now. Um, these gnomes are taking a hold of me, uh, Dawn. I don't know what happened. I'm actually thinking about doing a few gnome t-shirts and maybe sweatshirts. I don't know. What do you think? Would you wear a gnome on a shirt? 
I don't know. Is the Gnomes holiday book on your website or when will it be? Love them, Jean is asking. It is not on my website yet, Jean. When will it be? I'm trying to wait until it is, till I have the go ahead where I can get it published on um, Amazon. You know, when you publish a book on Amazon through uh, their self-published publishing uh, platform, you're really not in control over the date that the book goes live. So a lot of coloring book artists will announce a date and they'll say, oh, I, blah, blah, blah. Such and such a date is when my book is coming out. I never do that because it's stressful <laughs> because it, you don't know if that's going to happen. Basically, the way it works is you finish the book, you submit the file, and then you wait. And you're at the mercy of uh, the Amazon uh, self-publishing uh, department to approve your book. And you wait for the email to come through that will say that your book is now live on Amazon. Uh, the book I published last week, Mindful Mandalas, is live everywhere throughout the world on Amazon right now, except for Amazon USA. So uh, there's a glitch that's happening. And a few other, I know several other people that this has happened to. Um, Ruth Sanderson right now is in the same boat as I am with her Christmas magic book. So, but I'm waiting to put the PDF for this book on my website, um, until I hear from Amazon supposedly or supposedly, supposedly, um, the book, uh, the mindful mandalas book will be live today. So they say, I don't know. So I'm waiting. You wait, tick tock, tick tock, right? Lynn knows my frustration with tick tock. So I will keep you posted, but I still need to finish um, the inside of this book because I'm not done at all. The drawings are done. I've scanned it. Um, I have a new way of scanning now, which is much quicker than it used to be. And um, I have to clean up the pages after I scan. So that is what, ha what is happening with that. Hey, Lynn. So we've talked about Coloring Camp October 25th and 31st. If you're just joining us, uh, the Coloring Retreat this weekend, October 10th and 11th. Um, is going to be held live on Facebook, not on Zoom, because there was some feed, there was some uh, some concern about Zoom, so I switched it. So, all right, let me get my my camp book out of the way because we don't want that to get full of uh, chalk pastels. So we're coloring today with chalk pastels. Let's find that page. It's a grayscale illustration page. Um, here it is, and we're going to do something a little bit different with this page today. Uh, usually, we just jump into this. And we, thank you, Jane. And we, um, we basically uh, just color it with colored, like, as if we were coloring with colored pencils. We're going to do something a little bit different today in how we approach this page. And I'm going to talk about how to sharpen um, uh, chalk pastels, pencil, chalk pastel pencils, um, two different methods, or three different methods, actually. One of them is pencil sharpening, but I don't know if I have one regular pencil sharpener with me. I don't think I do. Um, and you can feel free to share this video, by the way, on your Facebook page or on your, wherever you would like to share it. Friends. Oh, here's a pencil sharpener. Okay. So there's three ways you can sharpen these pencils. One of them is with, is with a traditional uh, little tiny non-electric pencil sharpener, you know, you just kind of twist and turn. And I'll show you how that works. Let me get my, my little piece of paper here. And um, it depends how sharp the blade is. If you've no ever noticed on, it gives it a good point, but it doesn't give it a very long point. If you've ever noticed on these um, pencil sharpeners, there's a teeny tiny little screw there. And that means that this blade can be replaced. So this particular set of colored pencils or chalk pastel pencils, is by Stabilo and it does actually come with this actual Stabilo pencil sharpener. So it has a little place that it sits, nice and neat. The other way <laughs> that you can sharpen a chalk pastel pencil, which I'm going to um, say ahead of time, do not try this at home. Please be careful, this is a sharp instrument. This is very dangerous, as my mother would say. And um, you wanna kind of hold it in your hand so that the tip of it is kind of on your the, your non-dominant hand. So whatever hand you're going to, if you're right-handed, hold the blade in your right hand, rest it on your left, kind of placing it on your fingertip like that, and then just kind of grab it with the, your next three fingers and hold it so that my thumb is kind of pushing down. So I kind of want to brace it with, between my thumb and my index finger. Hey, good morning, Alice. And then 
this is best done standing up, to be honest with you. And you're basically kind of shaving off the wood off the pencil. And a lot of people shop in colored pencils like this. What it's do, what it does is it really kind of, if you put this in a regular pencil sharpener, you're always going to get these little pencil shavings here, like from the actual pigment of the pencil. And by doing it this way, you don't lose any of the actual lead of the pencil. And then your end result is kind of a funky little uh, looking little thing. It is a little fragile, so you have to be careful. You can cut yourself, so please don't try this at home if you're afraid of razor blades or you're not feeling comfortable with it. Um, and you kind of get a little thing like that. If you notice, this green pencil has really the lead sticking out even more. And uh, it's pretty sturdy to use to color with it, but um, that is one of the other ways. So please be careful with the razor blades. The other one is the Bostitch or Bostitch or any electric pencil sharpener, my Bostitch pencil sharpener that... Uh, you cannot watch me do that, shit, Lynn. I know. I've caught myself many, many times. But I, I'm 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 really um cautious when I'm doing it on camera because I don't really I want to make sure that I don't cut myself. So this one is just a Bossage um electric pencil sharpener. And let's hope it works. You don't want to put too much pressure. Because if you put too much pressure, it will actually clog, make the lead break inside there, and it would clog inside there. But that's a good point that it, it really kind of sharpens. If the pencil sharpener does become stuck, there's a couple of things that you could do to unstick it. One of the ways you can, one thing you could do is just take a regular uh, number two regular pencil. This needs to be sharpened anyway, and that kind of gets it going again. I don't know why that happens, but it does it's like magic the other thing you could do is disconnect the power cord very very important disconnect the power cord take out the little bin that the shavings drop into and if you look inside you could actually kind of see where the little thing goes around and around and you can kind of poke in there with like a uh and maybe like an opened up little paper clip or something some sort of wire to kind of dislodge whatever might be stuck in there there's nothing stuck in there i'm not going to do anything however please make sure you disconnect the power this is dangerous stuff we're talking about today isn't it if my dogs were doing something today that it was dangerous i would tell them it was dangerous for dogs and they kind of know what that means i don't know why but they do so dangerous things happen today so please be careful all right so we've got uh, Stabilo Chalk Pastel. So what we're going to do is something a little bit different today. And I wish this would sit, sit on my desk in a better way. But I guess I can't ask for everything, right? I do have a piece of paper underneath. Just my regular little schedule. And I am going to take um, just kind of a, a brownish color. I'm actually going to take this color here, which they don't have names on them. But it is number 1400 slash 685. Do they all have 1400? Yes, they do. This is just number 685. And it's kind of like a brownish color, I guess. And I'm going to take this and color this across the entire page. It doesn't make a difference which direction. On its side. So we're basically kind of making it so it's almost like a toned paper is what we're doing. You could print this out on toned paper if you wanted to, but this is basically what we're doing is we are creating, um, sometimes you can print, you can draw with pastels on like a brown or a blue or a gray toned paper. And we're basically creating this toned paper. And we're coloring just completely on top of everything. We are just kind of using it on its side very lightly. And then we're going to go back on top of it I'm going to use a uh, paper towel, I think, and just kind of uh, just kind of blend it a little bit. We don't want it to be too scratchy. We don't want it to be too dark. We want it to be just right, you know? So, you know, it's the Goldilocks method here. We just want it to be just just right. So we've got that kind of that look to it, that little bit of a brown. This is my, I'm creating a faux or simulating the toned paper, I guess. So just kind of across the whole thing. I don't want to have streaky lines. I just want to make sure it's just kind of that, that little bit of a look to it. 
Now I'm going to take just a regular paper towel. And part of this paper towel is, is a little damp. So let's make sure that I don't use a damp paper towel. So I'm just going to use a dry piece of paper towel. Let's see if I can find that. I'm really trying not to get up. How lazy am I? You ever have that feeling? Like, oh, now I have to get up? I have that feeling a lot. All right, I think that'll do it. Let's make sure it's not damp. Um, it's questionable. All right, I'm just going to kind of uh, fold it up just like that, just a little bit. And then I'm just going to kind of press right into my page. So it really, see the difference between here and here? I'm really just rubbing it. So that it is kind of staining the page. Remember when we did a, um, a color along where we stained the page with tea? This is similar. So we created that like tone look. But this was easier because we don't have to wait um, for it to dry. And I'm not going to break out a blow dryer and start, you know, with that noise. So we just basically kind of created a tint to it. Gonna get rid of some crumbs and it's not gonna really move. Now you could have done this with um, brown, you could have done it with blue, whatever color you wanted to, you wanted to tint the actual page. You could do this, hey Judy, you could do this um, on um, any type of coloring page, really, or any type of paper, just to create that type of tint to it. And now we're just going to color on top of this. Let me just make sure that everyone is here. Sometimes I have to, sometimes I have to refresh. Okay, so I'm going to actually start out with, um, I guess I'll start with the, with the bowl. Of the fruit because one thing that happens with um when you're using uh chalk pastels is that you want to be conscious of where you're placing your hand you don't want to uh place it on top of something you've already colored especially if it's something that you don't really want to blend a little bit okay so we've got an apple here so i'm just going to kind of go with the with the lights and the darks because you can still see the grays through that tinted page through the, through the tint we created and sometimes when you're using uh, chalk pastels or even oil pastels, you just kind of want it to uh, kind of touch the page a little bit. You don't really want to color it with a heavy pressure and make it more, make it too opaque. And we're only, we're going to kind of blend a couple of different colors. So I've got this kind of reddish orange, now an orangey red color. And now by kind of just going within, just on top of that, I'm going to leave a little bit of a light color there because I don't really want anything to happen. I want to have like a highlight. You know, like, you know, when you look at the apple and it's got like a little bit of a highlight and then I'm just kind of blow it off. Um, you can use, um, I don't know where my little blending stump is. Oh, there you are mixed in with the pencils. How dare you? Okay. So this one is just a little, uh, tortillion blending stump. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go like that with it. You can clean this off with an eraser, or you could use the razor blade and cut it so it doesn't have to, uh, some people put them in the pencil sharpener. I don't really know if I want to uh, be that advantageous, you know? Okay. Now we may as well have a Granny Smith apple sitting in here. I'm not really a fan of a Granny Smith apple, but why not? Notice when I'm talking about food, I just have to kind of consider what I may or may not eat. I don't know. Do you ever wonder about that? Like what you, what may you or may not, may you, may or may not eat. This is just kind of a lightish green. I may not blend that with the, with the blending stump because I just kind of feel like this itself has blended the two colors together perfectly. So that's how I'm leaving that. And then we may as well make it real healthy and uh, have an orange right here. I don't know what we're doing here. We're eating fruit and we're drinking a bottle of wine. And that's as healthy as we're going to get, right?
And I'm going to use this orange color here that I just used for this one kind of on top of it. Just kind of there we go. I'm going to blend it a little bit with my fingers. Now let's put another red just so that we can kind of make our eye move for this one. And this is more of a, a darker red, um, kind of almost like a burgundy, but kind of reminds me of a delicious apple. I guess I could make an apple that has uh, maybe a little bit of a green spot on there, kind of like a Macintosh. Not really my fave. Here's another good red. Let's see what we can do if we sharpen this one. I hope this doesn't get stuck. We might need cheese. Break out the cheese. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of a Granny Smith apple. I do like a golden delicious vibe. Yeah, see, this is just not doing it. I don't know what's happening. But enough for me to actually kind of blend a little bit. Everything does always go better with cheese, though, doesn't it? Okay, there's our next apple. And then this top one right here. Let's make it, we can make it a golden delicious apple, I guess. We'll add some yellow first. See, this is one of those pencils that um, I sharpened with the blade. I love cheese with grapes too, Judy. We just need food. Don't we? I mean, you may think I haven't eaten anything, yet, anything today, but I don't know what happens. I'm going to put a little bit of green with this Golden Delicious. This is good apple, Golden Delicious. Has anyone ever had Golden Delicious? Haven't had one of these in a long time. Add some white to kind of blend it a little bit. There are There is a little bit of dust with this. And then my bowl, I'm thinking I'm going to go with this kind of bluish color right here. This kind of turquoise. Alice says, yesterday I saw a vegetable on a list that I can eat, and it was called a snake bean. I've never heard of that either. Oh, I've already eaten. I've already eaten breakfast. I'm, I'm thinking about lunch. I don't know. Thinking about lunch. Thinking about lunch tomorrow. I don't know. Got to kind of think about food. So I've got a heavier pressure here, and then this side is going to have a lighter pressure, <coughs> and then here again. So coloring this similar to our, similar to coloring a grayscale coloring page. Let's see what happens when I um, add a lighter blue. This is kind of a cool periwinkle color on this side and I'll blend it together so they kind of merge. And I'm kind of going in the same direction as the actual bowl itself. Gotta kind of keep blowing off the the dust. This periwinkle color is actually becoming kind of a colorless blender. And then I will take, um, this is, it's not really black, but it's a good uh, dark color for it, for what I want to do. It's kind of like a charcoal, just to kind of give it a little bit of definition, especially uh, where the fruit is, and almost kind of like right there, just a little bit, kind of give it the little stems. You have to make sure that it kind of has a good point on it. That's that's a good enough point for me. And I'm just going to leave that the way it is. All right, so now we can move on to the booze. <laughs> we can move on to the booze. All right, so I'm actually going to move to color the bottle itself. Well, actually, I think it should be green, don't you think? Like a bluish green color. So let's start out with this green. And this side of it is darker, but I don't want to want to outline it or anything. I mean, I guess this could be club soda, right? Water. It doesn't have to be alcohol. Oh. 
And then there's the label. So we're going to leave that. Now think, consider that this is kind of like the darkest area of what we're coloring. And now let's take that turquoise color that I had a couple of minutes ago that seems to have escaped me. And we're going to mix it with the green. Judy's saying we are having leftover chicken pot pie. I made it yesterday for the first time ever. Oh, did you make it yourself? Or did you, is this like, this is this a from scratch? I know now I want cheese too. I always want cheese though. Everything goes so much better with cheese, doesn't it? What's for dinner tonight, Lynn? I don't know what I'm having for tonight. Cleo is watching the color along with me. Too funny. Hello, Cleo. Do you think she'll respond if I say her name? Give us the recipe, Judy. I don't remember what I... Oh, I had pizza last night that I made. I had to make another one. My chicken pizza. But I don't know. I need to crack down. I need to go back on my, uh, my hard-boiled egg diet. All right, so here is my turquoise color. Now, I think I will use my blending stump on this one. Let me just make sure it's clean enough, though, so that we don't get any red mixed in with it. Because that would make purple. Oh, a lobster, lobster roll sounds delicious. All right, that's get that pink off there all right so just going to blend in or blend the colors into one another blended it's like backwards talk right get rid of the crumbs and then this side could also make one of these little blending stumps too out of uh, a paper towel uh tube or a tube from toilet paper. We all know we have plenty of that lately, right? And then I'm going to take um, just this. This is kind of like a kneaded eraser. So it's a little bit of a, just to kind of remove a little bit of color here, especially right here. So removing that color um, is just as important as adding the color. And now the label itself, I'm kind of thinking it should be like a goldish, antiquish, brownish gold. So I'm going to start out with some gold. And then I'm going to go back in with a little bit of brown. And I'll use um, this funky looking uh, reddish brown, I guess. And I'm just going to kind of scribble it on there. I am going to give it a little bit of a an outline. And just kind of move, pull the color up by just kind of Flicking it, flicking it up. And then I'm going to take my uh, blender again, which I need to clean it. Don't look, Lynn. Right. You can open your eyes now, Lynn. Thank you, Bonnie Hughes. And then I'm just going to blend this together. See how you're kind of uh, seeing the yellow kind of come through? Flick it up, that flick. And then I'm gonna find that charcoal color again and just kind of give it a little bit of a, just a little bit of a little line right there. I'm not going to outline the actual object but I do want it to kind of uh, just be a little bit outlined. And then there was kind of like a burgundy-ish color I thought I had, I think it's this one. And that I think would make a nice cap. So then again, flick it over. And then for this side, I am starting on the opposite to make kind of make it look like it's um, got shading on one side and not on the other. And then I am kind of blending this within itself going to take this dark 
charcoal color, give it kind of a little bit on the underside and kind of a little bit right there, a little bit of color right there. But I don't want to um, outline what is there because when I get involved with the background, it's going to kind of make this pop out. All right, so speaking of background, we need a color that is going to make it really kind of pop. And um, I kind of think it should be like an orangey, a pinkish orange color. So this was a good orange color. I think it's going to look good against what's here, the fruit, and then the bottom of it could be a brown. So let's start out with this orangey number 311 and um, just kind of give it a, a quick scribble across. But I do want to have a little bit of a darker line here. And I have a, a something in the way here that is kind of preventing me from holding that pencil the way I really wanted to hold it, to hold it but um, just kind of giving it a scribble of this particular color. Alice says, I have to take her to the vet today. Oh, no, what's wrong? To a yearly checkup, but she has a reaction to the shot, so I have to give her Benadryl. I had a dog that did that, Alice. I had to, um, she had a reaction to all her vaccines, so I had to give her Benadryl for like three days before the, sh the vaccines and then three days after. Man, that is a stressful thing. And then you have to watch them. You got to wonder if it's even worth, worth the vaccines, isn't it? So stressful. All right, so just this orangey color here, I'm going to kind of give it a good uh, a bit of a more bit of more pressure here. I'm gonna go around these stems. I should have done those stems last. Do not ask me why I did them. All right, now I promised pink because you know why not? It's like when you're wearing something and you say, "Oh, look, it has pockets." I'm gonna put pink on top of it. And then I'm going to go back in uh, I think I might blend this with my fingers actually. I think it would push the color into the page more versus um, kind of removing it. Does that make sense? Oh yes. Send the recipe, Judy. She's gonna Judy's gonna post it on just color uh, coloring book. That's a very very good idea. Do we need a recipe thread in that group? We I always talk about we need a TV watching thing, right? A list of what to watch on TV. And I keep meaning to post it, and I never ever remember. I don't know why it just slips my mind. All right, so we've got this kind of this fuchsia color going on. I guess we could put another color in there just to kind of shake things up a little bit. Um, well, we could put a little bit of white and that will really kind of give it some highlights. So if I just kind of add a little bit of white here, here, but we don't want to, we don't want to dive into that section there that's behind everything. And then I'm just going to uh, blend it in with my fingers. Yeah, it's very nerve-wracking, Alice. I'll be thinking of you. Very nerve-wracking. Do they give her something when they... Um... You know, do they give her something when they... You know, I'm trying... I'm thinking... I keep hearing... I mean, I don't want to bring this up, but I keep hearing about Trump taking dexamethasone. And why do I think that that's what they give the dog when they're having an allergic reaction? Am I correct about that? Lynn would know. Is that what they give an animal when they're having an allergic reaction to something? I feel like it is. I feel like that's what they give to stop the reaction. But maybe. I don't know. All right. So there is my background. Looks like it's really kind of like you can still see this, this dark section, doesn't it? <clears throat> they give her Benadryl to, if she has a reaction to that's what they give her is Benadryl I thought they gave um, I thought they gave that dexamethasone I don't know it's been a long time since I've had that dog that uh, had that reaction so that is stressful 
So now I'm just kind of coloring this uh, bottom section here with this brown color. Yeah, I have to look it up. I'm, I think that's what it is because they always call it Dex. I don't know. All right, so there's my brown. And then I'm going to go back in with kind of like a chocolate on top of it. Do they give that for poison ivy? It's strong, right? It's really strong, like worse than a, it's like a prednisone family. All right. And now I'm going to blend the bottom section with another brown. And we'll see how that works out. So let's see. Go back with this color here. This, um, actually this one. This is more of a, is this the one I wanted? No, that's not. All right, no, this is it. So many indec indecisions, aren't they? These are Stabilo. Hey, Diana. Haven't seen you in a long time. Good to see you. Hi, everyone. Text you message about the sessions. I was trying to watch it on my big screen TV, but now I'm watching it on my phone. So disregard the question because it's been answered. I'm not on Facebook anyway because I'm ignoring those messages. But but anyway, <laughs> uh, I think that Alice watches this on her big screen TV. I know. I hate that you can't go in with your pet. I have that same thing. Isn't it stressful? Plus, you know what I don't like about that is when they get on the scale, isn't it embarrassing that they can't even say, well, you know, I've been stress eating and, you know, that's why I've gained a little bit of weight. So I feel bad for them. When Paisley went to the vet the last time and they called me from the, they called me while I was waiting in the car to tell me what was going on with her. They, um, the vet told me that she was very voluptuous. I thought it was kind of a compliment rather than telling me that my dog was fat. Okay, I've changed my mind here. I'm, go I'm going in with my fingers to blend. I always seem to use these chalk pastels on the cloudiest, rainiest, muggiest day. Can I just tell you that? That I feel like I just need, like, I don't know, air. I don't know what it is. It's like, oh, there's the weather again because I'm using chalk pastels. And then I'm going to take this charcoal color again, and I'm just going to kind of give it a quick little, not a lot, but a little bit of a, a flick of color, just so it kind of gives it uh, like a heavy bottom. It's kind of like wearing black pants with a light shirt type thing. Flick it away again, um, just to kind of get that, so you, that defines where the bottom is. Um, it almost kind of creates a shadow in a way, but... We just kind of want to highlight it. You don't want to outline the whole thing because things in real life are not outlined. Unless they are in your head. I'm not really sure. Drew, Judy says, our fur babies, babies had a checkup yesterday. Checkups, and they came back to the car to get the car, got them, and the vet came back with them to tell us about the results. Yeah, they that's what they did. I didn't really like it, though. Thank you, Mary. Alice is watching YouTube on her TV right now. Some of our, Some told us our babies need to lose some weight. Don't we all, though, Judy? That's what I say. You know, that's what I say. I say, you know, everybody's always about, you know, you got to lose weight. It's hard. Okay. So there is um, my finished piece. I am going to take black just straight black, and I'm just going to kind of draw a line along. Um, let's see if I can do this without making them making them crooked. I gotta, I have to pivot though. Put this back like this, and do this next one, and just kind of gives it a little bit of a frame, I guess, just to kind of to frame it in your book. And then um, you don't really do anything to this. You could spray it with a fixative. I don't really like doing that because I don't like the smell of it. You could actually spray it with some cheap uh, hairspray. And um, really cheap, unscented hairspray works the best. I prefer Aquanet, personally. And um, you could just leave it like that. Or you could frame it like this. And nothing would happen to it. It wouldn't discolor or anything. Um, it would just kind of like 
should just be the way it is. And remain. I'm going to leave this in my book. And by leaving it in the book is basically going to, um, I'll put a piece of paper over it before I close, before I close the book, which I believe I have underneath here. This is a pack of 60, Sarah. This is Stabilo 60 pack. You know, my vet's office is supposed to change, like, change something like that too, Bonnie, so that I could go in. Yeah, maybe it was the connection, Diana. I know a lot of times while I'm watching um, something on YouTube, it just kind of keeps spinning, you know, the loading button. And then I have to go back. I, I just exit back out and I go back in again. And then it seems to be okay. Thank you, Lynn Fisella. Alice says, Cleo says, if you limit my food, then I will eat Melody's food, so I'm not going on a diet. I'm here. I hear her. I think Paisley says that. Paisley needs to lose weight more than Scarlett does. And but Paisley, Paisley is a hog. If I give each per, each each person, if I give each person a biscuit, aka dog, um, Paisley will steal them. She'll steal both. She's a biscuit hog. A biscuit hoarder, I call her. Crazy. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Bonnie. The background looks good, doesn't it? I'm pleased with it. All right, so I'm just going to pop a piece of paper on top of it, and that's how I'll keep it in this book. And then let's see what we're working on next week. Next week is uh, the ninth. Oh, actually, there is no color along next Monday. There's no color along next Monday because it is October 12th. It's Columbus Day, and I don't know why I did that. However, we do have a coloring retreat coming up on um, October 10th and 11th, if anyone's interested in joining that. This is the next page, which will be in two weeks from today on October 19th. Now, keep in mind also that because of coloring camp, there's no color along on October 27th, right? So um, so let's take a look at my notes here that I made before I began. So I want to talk, make sure we talk, we talk about coloring camp. It meets October 25th and 31st. This is red ink, not blood, by the way. Um, and the coloring camp book is on Amazon. It's $21.99 to join coloring camp. It gets you seven days of tutorials. It will be forever viewable. Plus, I put them in a Google Drive folder now so that you could actually watch it anytime you want. You could download it to your computer. And um, this is happening October 25th and to the 31st. So uh, Saturday to Sunday. We have a lot of great giveaways. We are sponsored by... Um, Black Widow, Shapiro Farben, and Smooth this time. They're my official sponsors, so that's cool. They're each giving away not one, but more than one. I believe Black Widow is giving away three sets of pencils, and I believe Smooth is giving away three sets of pens. So they're not they're not going to be uh, skimpy with what they're giving away. Mary Whitworth is our paparazzi rep, and she's going to be giving away um, paparazzi jewelry. And Carol Blaze is giving away a painting that she's done, which looks really, really cool. Um, I'll be giving away something. I'm not sure what I'm giving away yet. And um, there's something else that's being given away. That's an object. Oh, Sandra. Sandra Selway is giving away uh, a CD from her choir, from her children's choir. So that's really cool. So we have a lot of just uh, products this time versus uh, only PDF books. And um, we don't have any other artists involved in it this time because I wanted to just kind of focus on the actual products. So the book is going to be cool. We're going to uh, jump into color theory again, and we're going to kind of take it a step further than we did in the last camp. And then we'll be calling a grayscale photograph in the pumpkin theme. Love that page. Uh, make it pop. Oh my God, is all I have to say with this one. This one's going to be really cool. And we're going to draw the camp house. And then of course, Alice's favorite, adding texture. That would be cool. We're going to deal with shading with colored pencils with this on the pumpkin page. And then this one, we're going to paint a coloring page <coughs> using watercolor pencils. I mean, watercolor paint. So that'll be fun. Then we have a coloring page here with the camp house. And then we have uh, a word search. This one's going to be a lot of fun. 40 famous artists. Can you think of 40 famous artists? I, I said, spent some time one night doing this. And then uh, coloring challenge, only seven colors of any medium on this funky little page. And then we've got the brain teaser again. So I need to complete that actually so I have my answers. How many circles? I don't know. Have you locked up your, your camp book so that you can uh, you don't touch it until, until camp? 
Then this weekend, we have a coloring retreat, October 10th and 11th, Saturday and Sunday, from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. each day. We're going to be working with watercolor pencils on Saturday, oil pastels on Sunday. It's $15.99 if you're interested in joining this retreat. Um, and it will be held on Facebook, not on Zoom. So there was a little bit of confusion. We had it going with Zoom at first, and then we decided to, um, I decided to switch it. Did you hide it, Lynn? Lynn has it under lock and key. It's like the time I was driving and I was eating that poppycock stuff, that caramel popcorn, and I had to stop and uh, put it in my trunk because I just was eating too much. <laughs> so I had to like pull over and say, that's it, I'm done with this, and put it in the trunk. You may think I had like zero will willpower, right? And then the gnomes holiday holiday gnomes coloring book. I'm working on it. I'm hoping that it's going to get uh, submitted. I don't know. I mean, it, Amazon is stuck. I don't know what is happening, but um, I have a book, Mindful Mandalas. It is like stuck. It's still currently unavailable. I just looked again, and um, I know Ruth Sanderson is having the same type of uh, problem. And we're frustrated because there's never a um, there's never a like a way to know when you can actually have a book release. So it's difficult. But I'm on top of it, and I keep calling them, and I think they're sick of me. But I don't really care. <laughs> so be as sick of me as you want. I'm just gonna keep calling them because I'm sick. I'm I want it to be live. So the PDF of that book will still will not be on my website until I can until the situation with um, the book that book of Amazon is resolved. Okay, so we are um, we're finished for today. This was a great color along. Thank you so much for joining me today. A little bit early today, but um, I will see my draw along group on Wednesday at 10 a.m. and then for the coloring retreat. If you need to sign up for it, it is on my website. I'm actually going to. Um, uh, I think I'm going to give something that's a little more fall related, but I'm not really sure. Is the calendar on my website? You didn't get the calendar yet, Cheryl? Yes, it is. All right, let me pop a couple. If you just go right to my website, annmanera.com, it's on the very, very first page. So let me just pop it here. Uh, you can get a free calendar to color for 2021. My goal is to give away 1,000 calendars. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but um, it would be kind of cool. So if you know someone that you that would be interested in the calendar that's not in the coloring community um, and you want to share the link with them and say, go over to the website and see if you can uh, get a calendar on anmanair.com. It's, I mean, it's 12 months right to color so it's cool and um so my goal is to give out a thousand calendars i mean my goal is to sell 1000 books how about that my goal is to sell 1000 known books but i figured i'd start small and see if i can give away 1000 things that are free I, I don't know so let's see if i if that'll happen that'll be interesting to see if i can give out a thousand free calendars who doesn't like free? Well, a couple of people did complain though, and they said it's not it's not printed. No, it's not printed. It's free. It's free. What the heck? What the heck? Right? All right. So let me see if I can find the link to the um, retreat because that's important, right? Hang on one second. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, I'll talk about it while we're here today is that um, a lot of, a few people, a lot, a few people have asked me if I would do a um, Christmas coloring camp. So what I think I'll do, and there's a lot of interest in the coloring group, actually, that's even now I'm seeing it. But um, what I think I'll do is just do kind of a two-day retreat type thing. All right, so the October uh, coloring retreat. There's a link for that. Oh, I don't know if you can get that. There's a limit on car on the number of our number of characters here. Okay. Yeah, so I'm thinking of that retreat I, for the um, and what I'm thinking is that it would be a um, 
PDF rather than a book because I don't want to do a PDF. One thing I'm not doing this year is Secret Santa. I've decided that I'm not going to do Secret Santa this year that I usually do every year. Several reasons uh, for not doing that, for making that decision. One of them is that um, going to the Christmas, <clears throat> Sandra saying, hope happy you are going to do the Christmas holiday retreat. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm not going to do a full week though. You know, um, I'm not going to do a full week. Alice wants me to do it. Well, I'm going to flip through this, the holiday gnomes. Let me see. I'm thinking of making a t-shirt out of these guys. These big guys. Um, I'm going to flip through this. Yeah, I'm going to do um, just a retreat. A couple of days. Um, sometime in, De in December. I don't know. I think I have the dates kind of like scribbled. Um, and it will have... Uh, what I'm thinking is that the PDF will have pages that we'll work on, like color your own Christmas cards and maybe some Christmas bookmarks. I have some Christmas gift tags. And then I have a book that is called uh, The Christmas Planner. And But I really kind of want it to be more of a holiday type um, thing rather than specifically Christmas. So holiday slash uh, Christmas, hol Christmas, Christmas slash holiday retreat, like Sandra is saying. And... Um, the PDF will have not only what we're going to work on during the um, the retreat, but it will also have more products. One of them actually are the color your own Christmas cards, which I'm I'm really really eager to to put in. And I think what I'll do too is I'll even create um, some cards that you can uh, print out yourself and color and create your own cards because you can print them on P on cardstock and just easily make your own card own Christmas cards and um, I'll create some gnome coloring cards. <clears throat> I have a whole line of uh, Christmas coloring cards now that you can call yourself. I've got some gift tags. Um, and I've got some other pages that are more like um, maybe like lists of favorite music. But I think a lot of people are, are not going to be attending Christmas gatherings this year like they would in the past. Or um, maybe getting together for like a holiday office party type thing. So I think that it's important that we kind of have our own type of little uh, party type situation. So the PDF, I think will be, um, there, there will be a fee to join it. However, the PDF is going to be, uh, jam packed so that it won't be just like just what we're working on during that time. Thank you, Lynn. I'm excited about this book. These gnomes have taken over my life and a uh, big shout out to Alice once again, because she was really been encouraging to get these done. Um, I've been working on the cover the cover was posted. So hopefully that'll be it. And then I included some of these that are kind of like, um, the frenzy style pages. This one's my favorite because I think these guys with the dog and the cat singing with the snowmen, plus they're in their high heel boots. You know, I was looking at boots actually to buy and I was looking at a page of uh, some boots just like this. And then I didn't realize when I was drawing this page that I was actually drawing these gnomes wearing the boots that I was looking at. So I don't know, maybe it's one of those things like um, when we think that Facebook is reading our minds type thing. Thank you, Alice. This is another favorite of mine. I love when they're all singing together because they look very happy. And I think that I can just kind of like hear them singing. I'm not sure if these snowmen need something on the bottom though. I guess they're okay. And the little music notes, music notes flying. This is another favorite too. I like this guy. He's with his presents, his, his little mushroom house. Of course, he's got a wreath on the door or hanging above. These guys crack me up. This one especially just kind of cracks me up. I don't know why. I wish I could... Um, well, I mean, I do know how to animate, how to create an animated, um, how to animate them, make their arms move and everything, but it's just too time consuming. This is the page that made it to the cover. And um, I colored this one to get it on the cover. So this is exciting. This is going to be an exciting book. So Amazon needs to get on the stick, let me tell you, and get Mindful Man Dollars and fix the glitch. Because I'm not submitting anything else until they fix that glitch. So send positive vibes to Amazon so that Mindful Man Dollars can uh, be fixed so that I can get this moving along. Because I still have to I have to finish the interior. I'm done scanning. Alice, I scanned with my phone. And it went much quicker rather than scanning with my scanner. What a difference. This little dog looks like it's in shock. It looks like it's saying, what? Christmas is here already? These, this couple just really just cracks me up. They just remind me of Frank Barone and Marie Barone from Everybody Loves Raymond. I don't really know why. This guy's cute with the candles. I hope he doesn't burn his beard. And um, this one is cute with the dog and the snowman. 
And I did not decorate this guy's hat like I did in most of them because I just wanted to kind of leave it open so that you could actually add some of your own things to. And these three, I don't know. They think that they're just like the Blues Brothers, apparently. This guy, he looks like he's a little disgusted with those presents and he's got a lot of work ahead of him. I feel like that about cleaning. So maybe that's what was happening in my head that day. Uh, this one's kind of funky. And then um, this guy, again, see the little dog with the, with the beard because he's trying to be a, a gnome like that. And um, I thought this was cool because it had the family and then the family picture up top. So I thought that was funny, kind of funky. And another couple of cats. And this is the last one. So that's it. That's my uh, my gnome, my holiday gnomes book. So just keep an eye on the coloring group for an update on that um, on that book. And anybody have any questions about? coloring camp on the retreat that's coming up or where everything's being held again once again uh coloring camp will be on facebook color alongs remain on youtube uh draw alongs remain on facebook the retreat is going to stay on facebook because we switched it um painting classes are on zoom private lessons are on zoom that's it thanks sandra i'll i'll uh, send you the information um later this afternoon when I get myself settled. Okay, everyone. Hey, thanks so much for joining me today. Hope you have a great day. And uh, I will see, see everyone soon. See ya.